What's up, guys? How's your day going? It's Mike and Chipper. Hello. In today's video, we're going to be hunting down the top six performing Vanguard mutual funds of all time. So let's go. Welcome to Money and Life TV, where our goal is to help you improve your financial position, career, and life. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. Give me a moment while I hunt down the top six performing Vanguard funds of all time. Oh, yeah! Be right back with y'all. Okay guys, that was a lot of research. A couple of things to point out before we get started. All the funds, which are the six, the six funds I'm gonna show you today, they're all mutual funds. I did not do any research on ETFs because this video is about the six all-time best Vanguard mutual funds. I can totally do a video on ETFs if you guys would like me to, just let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, number one, the first thing to point out is that, please note, I am not a professional investor. These funds and all the research I did is of my own opinion, and this is not to be taken as investment advice. What this video is for is if you do not have a lot of time to research stocks yourself and mutual funds and that kind of stuff, or you're unsure of how to look at investments and that kind of thing, this video will at least help you identify some of Vanguard's best funds. The second thing I wanna point out is there is no guarantee that the prior performance will continue into the future. Now the funds we're looking at are some of the oldest funds in Vanguard. I think all of the funds we're looking at are over 30 years old. So there's a lot of performance history behind them, which helps me feel comfortable personally as an investor versus if something is brand new and only has been out less than a couple years. It's really hard to know how it's gonna do long-term. The third thing I wanna point out is that these funds are actively managed which means that somebody is managing and actively trading the funds within the stocks within inside this mutual fund. If the fund manager changes, then obviously the mutual fund itself could change. So I just wanted to point some of these things out guys before we get started. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. The fourth and final thing I wanna point out is please take the time to do your own research. I cannot guarantee that the funds I'm about to show you are gonna perform the same way into the future. Nobody knows. I don't know. There's no way for you, to, you and I to know, but just be aware of that. But anyways, with that being said, let's go dive right into these. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me. The first fund we're, of the six we're going to be looking at is the Vanguard Wellington Fund Investor Shares, ticker symbol VWELX. This, my friends, if you want to see the oldest Vanguard fund in existence, this is it. Damn, I'm good. This is the fun. It's been around for 88 years. Holy crap. That's a long time. It has a moderate allocation in regards to its category, which I believe means it's very well diversified in various sectors of the stock market. So it's not just like healthcare. It's not just technology. It's very well mixed. Yeah, so this fund in general is two-thirds stocks and one-third bonds. And it's been a, it was founded in 1929. Can you guys believe that? It's pretty crazy. So let's just pause in a minute. What I did, obviously, is I took all the information from the website of Vanguard. And this is how I do a lot of my Whoa. research. Even when I'm looking at stocks or mutual funds, whatever it is I'm looking at, I like to use an Excel document to pull in my research because that way I can easily save it, I can transfer it to different computers, I can look at it wherever I'm at. So this is how I prefer to do my research. So let's look at rates of return. So this is as of, I think all this information is as of June 2017, okay guys? June 2017. I'm looking at this in August, but I believe a lot of this data 
it goes back to June of, of this year. So obviously, you can look at this chart right here. It shows you the one-year performance, three-year performance, five-year, 10-year, etc. Overall, an 8% return since inception, which if you think about it, the average return of the S&P 500 over the last 100 years is actually 8%. So this thing is right on the money. So this fund owns a lot of high quality blue chip stocks and large companies. If we scroll down, you can see it owns Microsoft, JP Morgan, Comcast, Chevron, Bank of America, Alphabet, which is Google, Intel, etc. It's got in terms of risk, it's on a moderate risk, which means it's not super conservative, but it's not overly aggressive either. So it's right in the range. Now, just another thing, guys, risk is very important, okay? If if a lot of the funds we're looking at here, they're probably uh, at a moderate risk or above. They're more aggressive in nature because that's why they're the best performing. There is a direct correlation between risk and reward. I'm sure many of you already know that, but just so you know, if you're near retirement, you might want to meet with a financial advisor before considering these funds because maybe this might be too much risk for you to take. I don't know. It depends on what you're comfortable with, but you have to know how much risk you feel comfortable taking before diving right in. Okay, let's get him back to it. So minimum investments around $3,000. And this is what the graph looks like on Yahoo. Let me zoom out a little bit. Since night, since it goes back to... This is as far as Yahoo Finance goes back, but as you can see, it's got a very solid graph, and from what I can tell, it looks like it's just gonna keep going up. That's what it looks like at the moment, until something else changes. But as, as you see, guys, on average, over the last 100, or 88 years, you're gonna, you can expect an 8% return on average. And the last 10%, or I mean the last 10 years, you can expect around a 7% return per year, five years, is about 10% per year. This is always changing, guys, but to know that this has been around for 88 years and you're gonna expect an 8% return, that's pretty darn good. Just to point out the fees, it's very minimal. It's only a quarter of a percent. Okay, let's go on to the next one, guys. Okay, Vanguard Morgan Growth Fund Investor Shares, VMRGX. Now, all of these guys, I will leave in the description section below these ticker symbols so you can go back and look them up yourself. Okay, the Morgan Growth Fund. So this thing is made up of large growth domestic stocks. So mainly stocks in the United States. That's what they mean by domestic, right? The fund is 49 years old. So it's been around for a while. It's been around the block a few times. More, okay, so this year, in two, or within, from last year to now, from, so from June 2016 to June 2017, it's basically had a 20% return, which is pretty stellar. Over three years, it's averaged 10% a year. Over five years, about a 15% return per year. 10 years, 7 to 8%. Since inception, a 10% average annual rate of return. Pretty cool. All right, and on all these guys, if you look on the Vanguard website, you if you click and find this fund on the Vanguard website, you can actually read about the fund, and I highly encourage you to do so because as a financial advisor recently told me, you want to read this product summary information because that helps you get an idea of what the fund manager is thinking about. All right, so it's made, this fund is made up of 297 stocks. The one we were just looking at, the Wellington fund, is made up of 98 total stocks. But also notice the risk is a little higher, meaning if the risk is higher, if the market goes down, this is gonna go down faster. It's likely to go down more than something with a lower amount of risk. What does it own? It owns things like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, Visa, Alibaba, Priceline Group. So a lot of technology stocks. And this is the portfolio composition. It does, On Vanguard website, it doesn't have this information on all of them. As you can see, this thing has 16% in consumer discretionary stocks. It's mainly in technology stocks, right? Because all of these are tech, tech companies for the most part. So mainly tech and healthcare and consumer discretionary. But notice the chart. It's a little choppier than the last chart we looked at in the Wellington Fund. And as you can see, look at this, guys. If you remember the, the tech bubble of 2001, well, look what this thing did when the tech bubble burst. This thing fell to the floor, through the floor almost. But now it's very healthy. It's back way up here. 
but something to consider that it does show if the market tanks, this thing is going to go down with it. This is a more aggressive fund. So that is the Morgan, the Vanguard Morgan Growth Fund Investor Shares. Let's go on to the next one. Vanguard Healthcare Fund Investor Shares. VGHCX. Okay, healthcare industry. So this one's really sector specific. By, in, by sector specific, we're talking about the healthcare sector. The fund's been around for 33 years, which is one year older than I am. So this thing's been around longer than me. <laughs> okay, average annual performance since June. Since in one year, it's about 11.5%. Three years, 10%. Five years, 18.5%. 10 years, 11%. Since inception, this is really impressive. 16 to 17% average annual rate of return since inception. Damn! because healthcare is very important in the world we live in, and that's why this thing is so powerful. This is probably the best performing mutual fund I have to show you today of all of them. All right, low fee ratio of only 0.37. Let's go down here. Let's look at the portfolio composition. It's made up of 76 stocks. Look at mainly in biotech, healthcare distributors, healthcare equipment, managed healthcare, pharmaceuticals, most of this stuff is pharma, almost half of the portfolio is in pharmaceutical based companies. And it owns things like Bristol Myers, Allergen, United Healthcare Group, which is an insurance company, Eli Lilly, and Merck, and, and just it goes on, so forth and so forth and on and on. So as you can see, this is what makes this fund up. But notice, notice the risk is at five. So this has an extreme amount of risk. This is very aggressive but it has performed, at least in the past, it has performed very well. So honestly, like on average, I think you could easily expect anywhere from 11% return to 16% return on average, if you hold this thing long term. So like I said, if you go to the website in Vanguard, you can read all about the product summary of this mutual fund. And this is what the graph looks like on this from Yahoo Finance. So it's had a pretty solid run. It's cut back right here so it's down in price a little bit so it might be it may be a good buying opportunity depending on your opinion but that is the vanguard healthcare fund investor shares on to the fourth one all right so now we're looking at vanguard u.s growth fund investor shares okay this is made up once again like the morgan fund this may, is made up of large growth domestic stocks it's got a fee ratio of almost a half percent and I forgot to put the age of the fund here, but if you look right here, it says since 1959. So it's been around for over 50 years. So in the past year, it's made about 19% rate of return. In the last three years, you can expect 10%. The last five years, about 15% return per year. 10-year average is about 8%, and since inception is about 10%. So I think just by looking at this, you might expect anywhere from you know, an eight to 10% rate of return if you hold this thing long-term based on its prior history. This thing is made up of 152 stocks. It's a four on the risk scale. So it's, it's not completely aggressive, but it's a little bit more aggressive than moderate. So keep risk in mind. It's made up primarily of consumer discretionary stocks. It's made up of healthcare companies, information technology companies. And here we go. We look at a third of the portfolio is in companies like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, MasterCard, PayPal, Visa, Stelogen Corp, Amazon. And what you're gonna find, guys, and I think you'll agree with me, if not, it's totally fine to disagree with me, but what I found when I was doing my research, the best all-time performing mutual funds usually were made up of technology stocks and healthcare stocks. Because the human race, it likes to continue to progress in technology, and we're always concerned about our health. And so in my opinion, that's why these things are so powerful and have performed so well over all these years. As you, see, as you can, guys can see, most of these have a minimum investment of about $3,000. And here is the graph on this thing. So notice, you notice how a lot of it was in technology stocks? Well, this is the graph from Yahoo Finance going back to before 1985. And once again, look at this, the tech bubble, when the tech bubble burst, look at how far this thing fell. 
This thing, like, I don't know, it went from, looks like it went from like 46 bucks down to 10 Ouch. But, obviously, since then, it's made quite the recovery. It still hasn't topped its all-time high, but it could in the future. Okay, let's go on to the fifth one. Okay, Vanguard Wesley Income Fund Investor Shares, VWINX. Conservative allocation, it's 57 years old. It has about 2% or less than a quarter percent fee at the moment. This is definitely a more conservative fund. In fact, this is an income fund. So this is, if you're looking to achieve income from investing in mutual funds, this is one of the funds you might consider looking at. This thing has a, about a one-year return of 5%, three years around five, um, seven, five years about 7%, 10 years around 6 to 7% return, and since inception of 1970, which means it's 57 years old, it averages about 10% or close to 10%. So if I'm looking at this and I'm just diving in at any given point, I could expect a 5 to 10% return realistically on this, in my opinion. All right. Asset class, it's balanced, okay, because it has a, a lot of different funds. Or, I'm sorry, it's balanced because it has, holds a lot of different stocks. It has 63 total stocks, and look at how many bonds it has. It has 997 bonds in this thing, which is what is helping produce a lot of its income. It's moderate on the risk scale, so it's definitely not aggressive, but it's definitely not super conservative either. Minimum fee, I mean, sorry, minimum investment's $3,000. All of these have a $3,000 minimum investment. If you go to Vanguard, you can read the product summary on this thing. And it holds companies like Microsoft, JP Morgan, or Chase Bank, basically, Philip Morris, which is a cigarette company, Wells Fargo, Johnson & Johnson, Cisco Systems, Pfizer, Merck, Dow Chemical, Intel, etc. This is what the graph looks like. It has a really healthy graph, to be honest, from as far as the stock chart goes. So... Look at all the dividend payments it's made throughout the years. Quite a few. And you can see it's had a pretty healthy growth trend overall. And it looks like it's going to continue into the future based on how this is going. It has an upward trend. Okay, guys, let's look at the sixth and final fund. Okay, so now we are looking at the Vanguard Windsor Fund Investor Shares. Do not mix this up with the Wellington Fund. That was the other fund with the W. So VWNDX. 59 years old, so this thing is pretty old. Fees of about less than a quarter percent. And this thing's been performing pretty well. So over one year, it's made 23%. Three years, about 6 to 7% return. Five years, it's around 14 to 15% average annual return. 10 years is around 5%. And since inception, this is actually the second highest rate of return since inception of all the six of these listed 11 percent. so i think if you're looking at this if you're looking at investing in this i think you could reasonably expect anywhere from a six to an 11 percent return if you're if you ask me okay what's this thing made up of okay domestic stocks so a lot of domestic stocks in the u.s very low expense ratios these this is the advisor of the fund Wellington Management is the advisor, and it looks like there's a second investment management company as well in this. Okay, let's go down here, guys. It's made up of 141 different stocks, and I just want to point out, because I forgot to on the earlier ones, is if you go to the Vanguard website and you click on the mutual fund, you can actually see the entire list of holdings, which, as you saw in my when I was going through my research, you can word it, it's right if you... Let me back up because I cannot speak. All right, so if you go back to the Vanguard website and you're looking at a mutual fund, I'm just gonna, do well, I'm in one right now. I'm in the Wellington fund on the website, but if you wanna see what it holds, you go down here to the bottom of the page and go to portfolio holdings. And that's how you can see every single holding in this mutual fund. Now, since this is actively, all of these are actively managed, these, the Stocks in this mutual fund can change over time, like I said earlier. So just keep that in mind. But this is everything that makes up this mutual fund. So let me go back to my spreadsheet. Okay, so top 10 largest holdings. Citigroup, Bank of America, American International Group, Bristol Myers, 
Broadcom, MetLife, United Health Group. So it sounds like a lot of financial stocks, and which is seems to be true because if I look at the portfolio composition, look at financial stocks, 25%. So a quarter of the holdings of this mutual fund are in financial-based stocks. It has some consumer staples, consum- consumer discretionary stocks, it's got some utility companies and information technology. Doesn't have the prettiest graph by any means, but still one of the best performing Vanguard mutual funds of all time for sure. So it's had its ups and downs. Notice during the tech bubble, when the tech bubble burst, it didn't eat it too hard. However, because it holds financial company stocks, look how hard it got hit. Because remember when 2008 happened, the banks got hit pretty hard before they got bailed out. But <laughs> from a stock perspective, they did get pretty, hit pretty hard. So this thing fell to the floor. It went from, it looks like $19 a share down to around $9 down here. So it took a pretty big hit. But it looks to be doing fine now. And all right, guys, these are what I found to be, in my personal opinion, to be the best all time six Vanguard mutual funds ever in existence. And like I said, as we've seen, all of these are all over. 30 plus years old, so you have a lot of data to run on. I just want to point out a couple other little things. So, as you know, we looked at this kind of chart, which shows the average annual rate of return on each of these mutual funds. Just so you know, that if you go and browse the Vanguard website, you might see some of the funds that say since inception with higher average rates of return than, than the ones listed, but the other thing to, you have to consider or think of is that those funds have been around for a much shorter period of time than all of these. These have been around the longest and have had the highest rate of return that I could find on the Vanguard website. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. I'm going to be launching a website soon. And as soon as I launch it, I will put it in the comment section down below of this video of where you can go and find this Excel document that I used in the video that breaks down all the research I did on those six mutual funds. And so you can download it for yourself and you can look at the numbers for yourself. Remember guys, always do your own research on this. Consider consulting with a financial advisor on your investments. They truly are the ones who will usually know mutual funds the best of anybody because that they know the people who do the research on them, right? I mean, that's these large investment companies are the ones who do extensive research on these funds and the and what stocks go into these things. So always consider that. But of course, I know like if you're like me, I like to do my own investing, but always do keep that in mind or at least consider it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you found this video helpful, if I could have done anything better, explain this better, if I didn't explain something right, be like, Mike, you big dum-dum, you didn't explain this correctly, or um, can you tell me more about this? Please drop a comment, I'm so happy to respond. Um, I, I love talking to you guys and chatting with you guys about you know taxes, investing, whatever it is that you're looking for. If you liked the video, please do not forget to drop a like before you leave, it really helps our channel out, so thank you so much. And if you're not already subscribed, if you're brand new to this channel, first of all, just welcome. Just so you guys know, we make new videos every single week. And if you're somebody who wants to learn more about taxes, more about investing, more about personal finance, career and life success, etc., please highly consider subscribing to this channel. If you have somebody who's been on the fence about investing, who maybe has Vanguard but has not invested in, in doesn't know what to pick, or at least what to start looking at, you might share this video with them because then that will at least give them some funds to look at. They can do their own research. And I want to leave you guys with this though, that you know this video is really not to promote just Vanguard. I am not trying to promote Vanguard in any way because I'm going to be doing a video in the future that covers the all-time best Fidelity funds, the all-time best John Hancock funds, etc. So don't think I'm doing just promoting Vanguard because I'm really, that's not my intention here. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, I love you. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your continued support. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.